Hey, what's good everyone? Rollo Tornado Jr. Dunks and Ice back with another custom sneaker. Before we get into the customs of the Nike Dunk Deftones, a few things first. Deftones are an American rock band based out of Sacramento, California. They did a collaboration with Nike back in 2003. They are about 40 to 43 pairs in existence of the Dunk High, so not only is it limited and rare, it's hard to find in general. If you end up finding a pair, it's usually an expensive price, which is why I decided to do this custom. Back in 20. 2014, I actually had a chance to have this shoe for a bit thanks to Chip, aka Running Chip, formerly known as Chip SB. The Deftones have an all smooth leather finish and a black and green uppers. And on the hill area, you have the rock band's name as Deftones and White Stamp. One last thing, I am not taking any requests. I am not taking any custom orders. Everything I use in the video, such as my camera gear and equipment I use for the customs, will all be down below in the description. All right, so the base sneaker I'm using is a 2013 Dunk High SB St. Patrick's Day. I got these from a local seller. The actual Deftones have a black stitching on the midsole and the leather uppers are a smooth leather finish. On the St. Patrick's SBs, the swoosh material is tumbled leather and they have this nylon material on the back. First step before I work on the customs, I hit up the homie Gifted Kicks on Instagram. He does restorations from sole swaps, back tab swaps, midsole dunk swaps, repaints, cleaning, a bunch of things. And one of the things that I asked him to do is the midsole stitching replacement. I asked him simply to change the white stitching to a black stitching since you know I'm not good at doing that kind of thing and I just didn't want to paint or dye it so I gotta go in and shout out and thank you to Gifted Kicks and make sure to follow him on his Instagram and I'll put that information down below in the description. All right so these are all the products I'll be using to make the customs. We have the base sneaker itself the 2013 St. Patrick Dunk High SBs, cotton balls, microfiber cloth, mask tape to cover areas I don't want paint on, acetone for prepping the sneakers, sneaker cleaner or any sneaker cleaner you prefer, Angelus green paint, Angelus flat black paint, I have this red cup but any plastic cup to fill water in, paint brushes, I have a lot from previous customs but I got these from Michael's Arts and Craft Store, GAC 900 or GAC 900 for painting fabric, a mixing jar for paint, Krylon matte finish for the finishing touches, as for the Deftones logo on the back hill area, I had my good friend Angela make these stencil cutouts for me by using a Cricut machine. I just had to measure how big I wanted the logo and your phone or a laptop to watch something while doing the customs and I asked what was a good anime to watch and a lot of people said My Hero Academia and I gotta say I really am enjoy watching it so far. Oh and I almost forgot to mention I'll be using a heat gun to speed up the drying process and Angelus flat white paint. Alright so let's go ahead and move on to removing the laces on both sneakers. Next up I'm gonna fill up the plastic cup with water and use rejuvenator sneaker cleaner to clean up the sneakers. Now I didn't have to do this step but I just wanted to make sure I had a clean sneaker to work with. I'm using rejuvenators, brushes, the medium brush, and using microfiber cloths to dry up the sneakers. I'm using acetone and cotton balls to prep the sneaker. What acetone does is it removes the outer finish varnish layer from the sneakers. Using cotton balls helps me with this step, and this step is important when customizing or painting. The paint will adhere to the sneaker and preventing it from cracking. All right, so if you're wondering if I'm watching My Hero Academia subbed or dubbed, I had to watch it dubbed because I couldn't work on the customs while reading subtitles. It was just really distracting. But I'll tell you this though, the show is really good and there's no fillers, which I like a lot and I highly recommend it. In second, yes, I didn't clean the soles of the sneakers, but I did towards the end and you'll see that later on. Now to get the swoosh from this tumbled leather look to a smooth leather look, I'm going to first use masking tape to mask off the outer areas of the swoosh. And I'm doing this because I'm gonna be using acetone and a lot of scrubbing on the swoosh to remove the layer. So I don't wanna affect the area around it and the masking tape pretty much helps with that. The first layer, I'm removing the factory varnish then the metallic gold paint. After I remove the metallic gold paint, I then remove the tumbled leather outer finish, which ends up with this yellow smooth leather look. I'm gonna repeat the same steps on the right pair. First, I'm gonna mask the outer layers using masking tape. Use acetone to remove the factory varnish, the metallic gold paint, 
the tumbled leather, and when I'm done, it should be a smooth yellow leather finish like this. There are still some paint around the threading on the swoosh, but the main goal is to get that smooth leather look. I'm pretty sure there is another way to get to this goal, probably using sandpaper and using that ramen and super glue trick, but I felt more comfortable using acetone and cotton balls. So the uppers that are green already that you see, it's a shade of green I don't want, so I'm going to paint over the areas I want green with Angela's green paint. For the areas of the toe box, side panels, and anywhere else I'm painting green, it's about 6 to 10 coats of green paint. For the nylon green material on the back, I tried using green paint and hoping it would turn out fine. It didn't turn out the way I would hope for, so I used white paint as a base coat and then painted it with the green paint. It was about the same number of coats to achieve the desired look, which is about 6 to 10 coats of green paint. After painting the green paint on the toe box, the side panels, and on the back, I'm going to be working on the tongue next. I'm going to be using this mixing jar, then using the GAC 900, filling it halfway, and then fill the rest with green paint so it's a one-to-one -one ratio mix. I'm using the end of the paintbrush to stir it up. Then I'm going to use that mixture to paint the tongue. I'm going section by section. As I'm going section by section, I'm using a heat gun to speed the drying process up. The drying process for this is a little longer, but this does help when using a heat gun. The left side is not touched and the right side is the one with the mixture. Next up, I'm masking up the outer areas on the side panels, the back, the swoosh area, front toe, and all other remaining areas that needed to be masked off before painting the uppers with the flat black paint. After painting the uppers, I use masking tape around the swoosh to paint it black as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm using masking tape on the sock liner and on the toe box area. I have this small glass paint jar that I'm using. I'm doing a one-to-one -one ratio with the GAC 900 and flat black paint. I'm going to go ahead and close that jar tightly and pretty much shake it very well. And just for extra measures, I use the end part of the paintbrush to stir it up and it just turned out something just like this. I start off by painting the edges around the tongue with a medium sized round brush. Then after painting the edges around the tongue, I worked my way to the back part of the tongue. After painting the back part of the tongue, I moved onto the sock liner and I'm painting that part black as well. I forgot to mention this in the beginning with the products that I'm using, but this is Angelus Jet Black Leather Dye and I'll be using this for the tongue tag. I use masking tape to mask off any of the areas I don't want before going and applying the black leather dye on the tongue tag. Then I use green paint for the Nike letters and logo. On the Deftones tongue tag, everything is black and the only part that's green is the Nike letters and swoosh. Next what I'm doing is I'm using flat black paint and painting under the flaps on the front lace area and on the top lace area. After painting under both the top and front flaps, I worked on the back nylon part that was painted green. On the actual pair of Deftones, the thread is black so what I'm doing here is I'm using a small detailed fine brush and 
pretty much just taking my time. Right now I'm using the flat black paint and painting around the edges of the entire shoe to give it that factory look. The best paintbrush for this would be a small fine detailed brush, which is the one I'm using right here. So now that we got the left shoe almost finished, it's time to work on the other sneaker. Before we start, if anybody watches Long Beach Griffey's video, I just gotta say that dude is really funny. Oh, and of course, of course, your favorite, you can't forget. What it do? We got Tan Tan AK Puerto Rico! What up, y'all? And Sky Pilot is currently on doggy vacation. All right, so first up, I'm gonna mask off the midsole using the masking tape, of course. And since you already know the process, I don't think I have to explain this again. So to save time and to save you that hassle, let's just go ahead and fast forward towards the end. Okay, so what I'm doing and what you see is me having the actual pair of Deftones on my phone and I'm counting the threads on the back panel and figuring out where to place the Deftones stencil. I decided the best way to go about this since the back heel panel is curved and not straight. I'm using the masking tape as a guide on the top part where the swoosh is and then another masking tape guide from the outsole leading to the first masking tape guide mark. I use a transfer tape to stick the stencil and I'm using this small flat head tool to apply pressure before peeling and applying the stencil on the back part of the heel using the masking tape as a guide. After applying the stencil on the shoe, I use more masking tape to cover the area before moving the letters off the stencil. Next, I'm going to be using the flat white paint and painting the stencils. So I probably did maybe 10, 12, 12 to 15 coats of white paint because I wanted to give that stamp feel if you were to touch it. So as I'm done using the white paint and removing the masking tape and removing the stencil using the X-Acto knife, well, I didn't let it cool down and set, I suppose. So as I'm removing the stencil, the letter D kind of just came off and so what I decided to do was just commit to it and just remove the rest of the stencil off. The good thing about leather and paint is that it's easy to fix any errors that happen such as the stencil problem. So I used the white paint for the stencil color and used the black paint to fix the outer area. Next is to work on the right shoe doing the same method. So before I jump into the final clips and the final b-roll, I just gotta say a few things. Shout out to anyone who plays Call of Duty or Call of Duty Warzone in general. And shout out to whoever watches Stone Mountain 64 because that commentary is gold. If you're wondering about cleaning the soles, so here's me cleaning up the soles. I believe it was old dried up gum so I use a flathead tool and rubbing alcohol to remove it. I also use Clorox disinfect wipes after cleaning up the soles just because well why not. I'm cleaning up the midsoles using the Rejuvenator sneaker cleaner before the last final steps which is to use the Krylon matte spray finish and lacing up the sneakers. I do want to thank all the new subscribers and the people who do watch my old YouTube videos, comments on them even if they are 4 years old but a special thank you and a shout out to the ones who really been the day ones for sure. If you haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button because it shows that you support my work and my videos. Hit that like button and comment what you think about the customs i appreciate you watching my videos and until next time it's gonna be good hey